G'day all, welcome to part 2 of our 3 part tutorial on Arduino's SPI interface. Today we're going to take a look at using Microchip's MCP4922 Digital to Analog Converter, or DAC for short. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series, I would suggest watching that first as it covers the basics and terminology of SPI in more detail and will help you understand this video a little easier. Okay, why a digital to analog converter and what does it do? As computers, including microcontrollers, are based on a digital system, they can only output a logic level high or a logic level low voltage. In the case of most Arduinos, this is 5 volt for logic high and 0 volts or ground for logic low. Be very careful though, because some microcontrollers, including the Arduino Duo, have logic level high of 3.3 volts. Whilst this is very useful for digital components, sometimes we need to output a voltage that isn't 0 or 5 volts to control the speed of a fan or provide a particular voltage for a specific part of the circuit. That's where the digital to analog converter becomes very useful. The microchip MCP4922 DAC is a very useful chip that does exactly what we need. I've used one of these chips in my constant current resistance and power dummy load uh, that I've done an instructable on and which you can find the link below. For more information on why I've used this chip and how I set it up in the circuit, please check out this instructor. As I mentioned, microcontrollers are only capable of producing digital signal. SPI uses this and is a very useful way to communicate with other chips in the project. The SPI consists of four main pins, the MOSI pin, the MISO pin, the S-Clock pin and the chip select pin. The MOSI and MISO and S-Clock pins are common to all SPI chips in the project. In the case of my dummy load, I have two chips that share these pins. The chip select pin must be unique for every chip and when this is active, either active high or active low, depending on the chip, it will connect to the other three lines and accept or send communication depending on what the chip and what it does. Um, as the microchip MCP4922 is a DAC and only needs to accept instructions from the master, the microcontroller doesn't need um, a MISO connection. The serial data in or MOSI line is on pin 5 that you can see here. The S-clock line is on pin 4 and the chip select pin is on pin 3. The line over the top uh, means that it's an active low um, and for this chip to connect to the MOSI and S-clock lines it must be pulled low first. When you are not communicating with the chip it must be high. So let's go there. The SPI bus uses digital communication in the form of logic level high or logic level low, ones or zeros. This forms our binary number system. Our conventional numbering system that we are all familiar with as the decimal system has 10 possible values before increasing the number of digits. So we can go from 0 to 9 before we then need to include a 1 to go to 10. The binary only has two possible values um, before increasing its number of digits, 0 and 1. So in the binary system, each 0 or 1 is known as a bit. As you can see, in order for us to have 8 different values, we need a 3-bit number. So 7 equals 3 ones. The maximum number we can count to using an 8-bit system is 255, which will give us 8 ones. So that will also give us 256 different values if we include the 0. For DAC, there are two main things we need to consider, what resolution the DAC is and the voltage reference. As the MCP4922 is a 12-bit DAC, it's capable of 4096 different values sent from the microcontroller. This ties in very closely with the value of the voltage reference. In this case, my dummy load, I've used a voltage reference of 2.048 volts, which may seem a bit unusual, but 2048 is exactly half of the number of values which is 4096 and this will make a bit more sense in a minute. The best way to think about what the DAC does is it accepts a binary number. For example if we send it a value of 4095 it converts it to a percentage of its maximum value and this maximum as this is the maximum number we can send it it sees it as 100% and therefore will output 100% of its voltage reference. In this case, it'll put out 2.048 volts. If we send it 2048, it sees it as 50% of its maximum value, so it will output 50% of its voltage reference value. And again, in this case, it's 1.024 volts. 
The reason I've used a voltage reference of 2.048 volts is that if I send the DAC 1, for example, it will output half a millivolt. If I send it 2, it will output 1 millivolt and increase by half millivolt steps all the way up to 2.048 volts. So it makes it very handy and very easy to work out values. Now going back to the data sheet here. Now that we've got all that under control, let's take a look at the data sheet. Uh, this is the section which describes the serial interface or SPI. As we can hear, as we can see here, this is the chip that accepts mode 00, zero as you can see there, which is great and that is default for the Arduino. We can find the maximum serial clock frequency that you can use. It's a little bit further up in the data sheet. It's up on page 7, so we'll just go up and check that out. And as you can see here, it's 20 MHz. So the Arduino defaults to 4 MHz, so we're well within that frequency range. We're well under what we need to be, which is good. I'll just go back down and we'll have a look at some more serial stuff. As you can see from this table here, this is what we need to send the DAC for in order for the DAC to work. So we needed to send, we need to send 16 bits or 2 bytes of information. In the first byte, it includes four configuration bits. The A, B bit um, is means that if this is a zero, you can see down here, if this is a zero, we will write to DAC A. If this is a one, we will write to DAC B. This is a buffer. This inputs, this enables an input buffer that comes from your voltage reference. If your voltage reference needs to be buffered, it will often say that in the voltage reference data sheet. But in our case, we don't want it buffered. The voltage reference I'm using, we just want it to go straight into the DAC, so we're going to set that at a zero because we want it to be unbuffered. This, the third bit, is a gain. It's that you're able to double your voltage reference value by setting that to a zero. But in our case, we're happy with the 2.048 volts, so we're going to set that. As a one. This bit here will shut down the DAC. If it's a zero, it won't output anything, and if it's a one, it will be active mode operation. So, you know, generally we want it to be active, so we'll default that to one, and we'll go over these values in a little bit more detail shortly. The rest of these bits here make up our 12 bit data value. So, for again, where we were talking about earlier, if we send it 4095, the binary value for 4095 will sit in these 12 bits here when we send it. Um, so that's pretty much all that we need to know from the data sheet. If we head across to the code, we can have a look here. First, very thing, first thing we have to do is include Arduino's SPI library, uh, which we do. It makes it very much easier for us to use. The second thing we need to do is to set our constants. Now, this is much easier than trying to remember that the chip select pin is actually pin 9 on the Leonardo. This is how I've set it up in my project. It's on pin 9. That can be on any pin. It doesn't have to be specifically pin 9 as long as it doesn't conflict with anything else in the project. Now this constant integer is actually the preferred way of defining these values now uh, as opposed to the old Arduino define statement. Uh, this is, they've actually said that this is their preferred way that you do this now. Into the setup, uh, as you know, the setup happens once, um, once only, every time the microcontroller starts. So in here we need to set our pin mode uh, for our DAC. So we need to set our chip select pin as an output. And because our chip select pin is an active low, so that means when the pin is low it will be listening to the bus. We need to set that initially high because we don't want anything unexpected to be happening. Um, next we initialize the SPI. So this, what this does is, is set the pin modes for your S clock and MOSI and MISO lines. Um, it also sets registers um, to say that yes we want to use SPI. Uh, we want to set our SPI bit order to most significant bit first. This is really not absolutely necessary, but it's just just in case, uh, because the default for Arduino is MSB first. SPI set data mode. Now, as we discussed, it's, it accepts mode 00, zero which this SPI mode 0 does do. Um, but again, that's default. We're just doing here just to be sure. 
we'll come back to the loop function. Um, okay, so this is where all of the magic happens. So this is a function, and a function allows us to to basically take all the heavy lifting out of what we need to do in the loop code. If we needed to write this much code every time we wanted to send a value to the DAC, it would be quite extensive and quite hard to understand. So that we use a defined function that we write ourselves so that we can reuse it. So this void here basically means that this function is not returning a value. It's not giving us a value back. All we're doing is using this function to send something to the DAC. We don't expect anything back. So this void just says that exactly that. This is the name of the function, set DAC, and it accepts two parameters. When we put a value in here, this is where we put our binary value, our 12-bit binary value. And this here is where we tell the function which DAC we want to set. So because we've got two DACs, that can either be 0 for DAC A or 1 for DAC B. Now, this section here basically sets our initial values. So to make it a little bit easier to understand and a little bit easier to see what's going on, I've actually entered the actual binary value here. Now this 0B tells the Arduino environment that I'm, act I'm about to write a binary number. So please take it as that and don't take it as a decimal value. Um, so every time you see that 0B it's a binary or a 0X is a hexadecimal value. So as we mentioned before, our initial setting uh, register, this is what this sets. So the first bit here is 0 which will mean that it will output to data A. This changes, we change this a little bit further on in the function when we need to send it to DAC1. This here um, sets the buffered state of our voltage reference, which we've set to 0, which equals unbuffered. This one here means that we have set our gain to 1. Uh, we don't want to double our voltage reference, we just want to keep it at 2.048 volts. And this one here uh, means that we don't want the DAC to be shut down, we want it to be active. The rest of the four zeros will actually make way uh, for the first four bits in our value. So the SPI transfer function can only send eight bits or one byte at a time. And because our value that we're sending is actually 12 bits long, we need to separate those values. And that's where we use a bit of binary and, um, and using the ORs and the AND functions in Arduino. To make it a little bit easier to understand, 4000 as a decimal value will look like this in a binary value. It will read 51010000. 4000 and as a decimal value and that binary value equal the same thing. Our DAC register, which we set earlier, so these four bits here need to go first. They need to be the four, four bits sent first on the SPI communication because that tells the DAC what it's about to expect. So what we need to do is try and get the four values, the four first bits out of this 12-bit value and tack them on the end. So for us to do that, what we do in the Arduino code, if we have a quick look now, is that to set our primary byte, which is the first thing we're going to send, we want the first four bits to be the DAC register, which is this one here, and then we want the last four bits to make up the first four bits of the actual value. So this here, explained a little bit easier, is shifting this value here, and what we're doing is shifting it eight bits to the right. So the eight bits that are here are just going to get pushed off the end. These four ones here are going to get shifted to the right eight positions and be replaced with zeros. Because we are storing it as a byte variable, it will only allow eight bits. So it won't store the first eight zeros. It will only store the first four zeros. So hence why we only have eight bits there. So what we've really done is shifted these four ones to the right eight positions and that gives us this. Now in comes our logic OR or logic AND operations. They sound a bit confusing but they really are quite easy. Um, an OR gate will, if you have 
a zero in one variable and a zero in the other, it will give you a zero return. If you have a one in either of them or a one in both of them, it will return you a one. So we use that to be able to combine it with our original four bytes. So what we do is we or this new value that has the last four digits of our value or the first four digits of our value and then we or it with our original DAC register. So there's a zero in both of these so that will stay to zero. There's a zero in the second value so that will stay to zero but there's a one in this one so it will become one. There's a one in this one it will become one and then there's a one in the rest of them so the rest of them will become one. So now this value down here is actually a combination of this value here and this value here. So now that we have the first four bits are our settings, so this will go to channel A, we won't have a buffered output. This will set our gain to one, this will make us active mode, and this is our first four values of the value that we want to send. And that is handled by this one line of code here. We've shifted the value 8 bits to the right and then we've audit, which is what this vertical symbol here is with our DAC register and then that becomes the primary byte, the very first 8 bits of information that we want to send. Now our secondary byte uses what's called an end mask. Now to make that a little bit easier to understand, an end function will return a 1 only if both variables have a 1 in that position. So here we have set up a mask and a mask basically allows us to isolate any particular part of a variable. Because we've already got the first four bits of our value taken care of, we don't care about them anymore, all we want to see is the last eight bits of our variable which are these ones here. So we set those to 1 because we want to see what's happening in that information. So when we use that end mask and use these last 8 bits here and compare it to our value, it's only going to return what it needs to tell us. Because these are zeros here, it's going to ignore these four ones. It's not going to return anything. But because there's a one here and a one here, it will give us a one. But because there's a zero in our value, we don't want a zero here. So if we had an or, we would end up with a one. But because we've got an and, and both of them have to be one before we output a one, we will end up with a zero, a one, and a zero, which basically gives us the last eight bits. And again, because we've stored this in a byte, it's only going to remember those eight last bits of the value that we need to send. So now we have a DAC primary byte, which the first four bytes, four bits of this byte are the register, uh, making up, you know, this channel, gain, buffered, and active. And the last four bits of the primary byte will make up the first four bits of the value. And the DAC secondary byte will make up the last eight bits of our value. Now, as we go down into the code, obviously we want to be able to set channel 1 or channel 0. And that's what this code does here. A switch statement will look at what value is in the channel here. If it is a zero, in the case of a zero, it will use a bitwise operation, and the bitwise operations are actually a little bit outside the scope of this video. So if you want to check out bitwise operations, uh, there's a lot of really good information out there about using them. It will put a zero in our channel section, which is now part of our DAC primary byte. So we want to put in the DAC primary byte, in the very first value, we want to put a zero. If we say that we want to set channel 1, it will put a 1 in the very first value of the DAC primary byte. So it will set channel 1. Now we actually get into sending it. We turn off the interrupts because we don't want to be rudely interrupted uh, whilst we're sending this information. We write our chip select low. And because we have an active chip select low, it's going to wake up this DAC and say, OK, talking to you, wake up Australia. Then we send our first primary byte, 
and then we send a second byte. So now we have sent 16 bits of the primary byte again. We'll take up the first four bits of that will be our configuration. The second four bits of that will be the first four bits of our value. And then the second eight bits of our value will go in the second byte. We write the chip select high again to say, OK, we're finished talking to you and we enable the interrupts. Um, and that's about it. Um, the most common use for DAX is obviously you want to be able to send a voltage. So to work out, to say for example if we wanted to work out 0.1 volts, first we turn that into a percentage of our voltage reference. So we divide it by our voltage reference. 0.1 divided by 2.48 times our maximum number of values that we can send. So if we send a DAC, a binary value of 200, it will output 0.1 volts. Likewise, if we want to send it 2 volts, we output we do 2 divided by 2.048 times 4096. If we send the DAC 4000, it will output 2 volts. And going back to the loop function, that's exactly what we've done. We've sent 200 to DAC A, and we've sent 4000 to DAC 1. So that will output 0 0.1 volts on DAC 0, on DAC A and it will output 2 volts on DAC B. So if we have a look at actually what's going on in the circuit, this is what's actually sent. This is actually a capture of the circuit doing exactly what we've told it to do. This down here is our chip select going low. So it will then say, OK, I'm low, I will listen. This here is our clock. So as you can see in the top right hand corner, it's at 4 megahertz, which is what we set it to be, or what it defaults to be. This here is our MISO line. Because our MISO line is not used on a DAC, it stays at low. And this is the magic MISO line. This is where our binary values. As you can see, the first four bits that we sent, it's going to channel zero. It's going to, it's not a buffered input. It's leaving the voltage reference to one. It's leaving the active mode of the DAC. The first four bits, this is where we're sending 200. This is where we're sending a value of 200. We'll see the value of 4000 that we've been talking more about in a second. This is the first four bits of 200, which are all zeros. And this is the last eight bits. And then, once it's done that, it puts its chip select high again, and then the DAC outputs what you tell it to. And then our loop code, this is our very next one, where we're setting DAC 1 to be 4000, or 2 volts which is what we've been looking at. Again, the chip select goes low. OK, I'm talking to you. It starts the clock frequency. And up here, we're setting to DAC1 this time. And we, again, this stays the same, except we're setting to DAC1. And there's our first four bits, which, if you remember, we go back, we go back to here. And our first four bits of 4000 was 1111, which we can see there. And as we can see, 1111 there. And if we go back to our last eight bits, it was one zero one zero and then four zeros. And that's it there. One zero one zero and four zeros. And that will set that DAC to output two volts. And as you can see the chip select goes high. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. Um, the next part of this tutorial series we're going to be talking about the analog to digital converter. Uh, we'll be talking about two-way communication and using the MISO line as well as the FOSI line, so please stay tuned for that. Um, please leave your comments below. Don't forget to check out my Instructable um, on the dummy load, and it'll go right through in more detail how I used these chips in the circuits. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.